Welcome to the US National Sporting Clays Championship, held at the National Shooting Complex in San Antonio, Texas. It's a nine-day spectacle dedicated to everything sporting clays. <laughs> you only get these for being really, really crap. <laughs> including over 15 competitions, two practice courses, side games, and vendors of every gun, cartridge, and piece of apparel under the sun. That was equivalent to six months in Afghanistan, how unbelievably painful that course was. We were here from the guys from Longthorn who make some of the finest clay and hunting guns on the market. Jonathan. I've seen you on TV, on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy one of the biggest and most efficiently run clay shooting events in the world. This event brings in staff from all over the world. One of which is Neil Chadwick, course setter and shoot chairman, who gave us a tour of the facility and gave us a flavour of the shoot. We found a Brit, luckily, or are you an American now? No, still a Brit. Just about. Yeah, still got a British passport, been here 30 years now. So this is Neil Chadwick, the shoot chairman. Right. <laughs> chairman, not shoot captain or shoot lord. Yeah, my goal really is to bring in a set of really good target setters so that they can put their own flavor on the different presentations that they set. Years ago, they just used to be two of us, but of course then the tournament was maybe, I think, 300 competitors. Now we're up to 2,300. 2,300 competitors. 2,300. How many events are there? 14. 14 different yep. events? Yeah, 14. All of them, apart from this one, 100 birds. Main event, of course, being 300 targets. And there's a practice layout as well. 16 practice layouts, two games, snooker, and a new game this year called Matrix. We've got ZZ Bird. That's uh, quite an ordeal to put on. We move approximately 450 machines to the different events, position the targets, where this year they actually put out over 2 million targets. 2 million targets? Yep. Yep. Wow. So this place is a mile by a mile? Basically a mile by a mile. We're on about 600 acres. And every acre is used? Every square foot. The main event is the real attraction here at the Nationals. 300 targets spread over four individual 75 bird courses. Three of those were set very normally, but the fourth, the green course, was very tasty indeed. There was an array of big distances, crazy angles and super speedy edge on targets. Now the green course is kicking ass by design. You saw yeah, that. that well, suddenly you're seeing targets over the 50 yard mark. You're right. seeing some big, powerful, horrible, edgy stuff. Yeah. Right. Good. Yeah. If any of the shooters have got a, have got a weakness, yeah. we'll find it. I was really disappointed that I didn't shoot the main event just for the green course. And although it damaged some scorecards, most people left with a big smile on their face. So this is not my gun, although it's, well, it's half It my looks gun. like your gun. Hey, it's the same action, but they're my barrels, my stock. They're all interchangeable. So this gun has got a serial number on that we can bring to the US. Because I am terrible with paperwork and once again, didn't do any. What's new with this gun, and it's not the same as yours, no. and it was specifically designed for the American market, is it's got one of these. So this, unlike my gun, has a barrel selector, which is... Amazingly amazing. The American market likes barrel selectors a lot. I love the fact that my gun doesn't have one because 
you don't need one when you shoot the same chokes in both barrels. And that's what I do with my gun. So I don't have a barrel selector either. However, <clears throat> you've been testing this gun and you didn't know, which means the barrel selector works fine. Um, what we will find is that Sasha's get really annoyed because instead of the usual, which is this that I do, because I get to do this as well. Coles has a global reputation as the aftermarket Beretta specialists. And they have a permanent store at the NSC. So we popped in for a look. Rich Cole, you are Cole. That, they accuse me of that on a pretty regular basis. You're Cole. Yeah, yeah, I'm Rich Cole. Custom Berettas yes, is sir. your thing. That's, that has been our thing. You know, I was trained by Beretta years ago and okay. have a, a great relationship with Beretta and a tremendous passion for them. And of course, Beretta produces a product that is, even in their basic levels, is a very, very good quality product. So it's worth making it pretty, doing something special, yeah. making it personal. Beretta, and, don't focus on that too much. They but, need to make a good and reliable yep, product. That's and that right. doesn't leave right. much room for customization. Like that. Yeah, like that, like that, yeah. And you're doing the majority of this stuff in-house? Yeah, we do. We do it all in house. We do have a we do have a contractor that we work with that does the actual laser engraving, mm -hmm. the solid color Cerakotes and things we do in house. When it gets to some of the artsy stuff that we do, um, a lot of these are like airbrush paintings yeah. of, of things on there. You know, we have an outside contractor who is a tremendous. Well, you're just finding the best of the best. If there's somebody that we can outsource to yeah. that's more skilled than we are, we want to use that. That makes sense, you know? right? You have a fantastic website that mm -hmm. I have put a lot of people into because you stock just standard Beretta wood set sets, mm -hmm. hundreds. Yeah. Of yeah, just yeah. normal yeah. Beretta wood sets. So if you have a double yeah. below, you want a different wood on, you go for it. If you want a grade five silver pigeon stock, it's the place to go. It it, it really is. Well, thank, thank you, John, for producing awesome Berettas. Well, thank you. And you know, we we we've watched your videos. You know, I got I got to put the plug in, and you know, in in our shop, we have a, a we have a loop. There you are. You know what I mean? You'll come around there. You're on one of those because you you do a fantastic job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. We'll see you have soon. a great week. Once my gun was together and I was a few coffees more awake, me, Dan and John went to hit up the practice course. Okay, before we go and shoot anything serious, they've got 16 stands to practice. It makes sense to practice because shells are slightly different. The clays are totally different. It's just uh, see if we can find some connection. A wise man said to me, until you have shot 4,000 targets in the USA, you will always feel a bit confused. So I shot 100 practice targets and hoped that this would help in some way. Or at least 2.5% of the way before we shot the five stand. There is a lot of going away targets out on the course, maybe not so much on the main, but I've seen. But in this practice, the first three are going away. It's an American thing based off their hunting history. And I'm glad that I have new eyes. All right, that was the west side practice. We're gonna go check out the east side quickly, then it's back, some kind of nourishment. I always think the practice should be hard, but it's made practice the open and the practice here relatively soft. I feel like you should go out on the practice and be like bruised and your ego demolished. And then you go out on the actual course and you realize you're not that. Whereas you go out on the practice, you come away feeling, you know, strong and then you go out onto the competition. And... If Sporting Clays is a fun run and Fit Ask is a marathon, then Five Stand is a sprint. Especially when it's run as efficiently as this. All right, charged up the hill after a quick lunch because we're in the land of fried chicken. We ate a lot of chicken very, very quickly. And now it's time for us to shoot Five Stand. Could do with like a 20 minute digestion period really, but hey, we're not here to win, we're here to have fun. You shoot the layout, you walk to the next layout and you're straight into the next target. No wait time. Firstly, that is amazing, but from a fun point of view, it doesn't allow a lot of time to chat. Not so pretty. It's also incredibly difficult to film. Not being used to this intensity, it was a bit of a shock. Ban him. What's up? Abom <laughs> abomination. I picking just him off, picking him just off you the Especially if you missed a pair, there was no time for mental preparation for the next one. All right, we're two in, it's not too pretty. 
I complain all the time, but it's an interesting thing. Certainly these slightly slower targets. It's such a different shooting style to what I'm used to. But yeah, on the second one, you have the three bird, nice and long. The two bird, lots of power. The six bird, lots of power. No problem. Anything that takes a little bit of slower gun movement, a little bit more calculation and, and skill, I'm done. You just had to get on and shoot it. If you had a bad stand, it really took some mental fortitude to get into the next stand and try not to do the same thing. Single three. Oh, come on, it's fine. It's just clay shooting. I've got an excuse. You guys are just terrible. I'm British. The clays move too slowly. I have to show everything made hate leader as I'm missing it miles in front. By the end of our session, though, the mood had lightened. And with the aid of some great light-hearted refs, quite a bit of fun was had. Eight, four, five. One. We got an 18. Epic, man. Well shot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Longthorn was stationed at Pacific Sporting Arms, who are one of their importers. I caught up with the owner, John Herkovitz, to learn a little bit more about that business. What do you find most people shoot spec wise? Is 32 inch a big thing here? Yeah, 30, 32. Uh, 32 is probably the norm, probably 90% plus are shooting 32, but uh, there are some 34 inch barrels, some 33 inch barrels that we do. It's a different style of target, a different style of shooting. It requires a lot of people are shooting big, big heavy guns, super heavy guns. It's a little bit different than Europe, you know, where they tend to shoot lighter guns. But here there's a variety of different manufacturers of guns, you know, so the weights change depending on what the customer likes. Yeah. How things going with Longthorn? Longthorn's great. Everybody's out demoing the guns. Everybody enjoys the gun. It's new, it's, it's innovative, and uh, we're happy to have them. The more serious you get, the longer you do it, the better the gun you want. You know, the better the quality. Of course, we like the better engraving. And it's <laughs> definitely a thing Americans seem to want a way flashy gun than we would typically we do we love coming. i spent a lot of time in europe uh you know pretty you know not a lot of engraved guns over there although there are some the wood quality i think they're more into strength than they are beautiful wood americans like a little bit of bling they love good wood even though they have to understand the better the wood the more chances it's going to crack but they still love beautiful wooden gun. They like beautiful engraving. And it's, it's always worth the gamble in my head. Get super pretty. I agree. I agree. It's always fixable and replaceable. Yeah. Why, why, why shoot an ugly gun? Life is too short. Life is to too shoot. short to shoot an ugly gun. That's true. It was an early start on day two for an eight o'clock kickoff on K-Cup. An event run with the same military precision as everything else here. 1,800 competitors get through this event over the week. It was described to me as soft. And yet I managed to make a rather big mess of it. Just one of those days. Yeah. Before my first trip to the US, Mr. Solomon said that I would miss in front. And this was the case here. Good morning and welcome to Cake Up. A lot of people use this for warm-up apparently and it's never set too hard. It's a fun shoot. So two squads start on each. There's an A squad and a B squad. With a B squad, the A squad will go first, then leave to the next stand. Everything here at these American events seems to be run to a military precision. All we're waiting for now is the cannon, and they'll be straight off. Any minute now. Any minute now. Let's rock and roll. Stand one did not go well. These targets were fairly easy and fairly slow, and I clearly just shot nowhere near them. It had one going away target and then a simple rolling target. It should have been easy. If my other half is watching, he's told me to go and see someone about my back for a while. Should we go, I've told you to go and see someone about my back. But luckily I've got a titanium shot gun. So. But clearly something wasn't quite right in my eye-brain combination today. I know we complain every time, just stop complaining and just learn how to shoot. Yeah, realistically. Not just shoot 100 right. birds, 200 birds and go home. <laughs> That's bad. I loved this stand. It could have been shot either way, and between the team, half of us shot the midi first and half of us shot the rabbit first. 
there was a right to left rabbit that shot out and a big looping midi. You had the time to do it either way, but the gun speed you needed to shoot the midi first meant you had to slow down massively for the rabbit and vice versa. Can you speed the rabbit up? <laughs> if you shot that rabbit off the trap arm, you then had to slow right down for a nice big gap on a complex midi. Neither was right, neither was wrong, but it was a great stand to shoot. Trophy. trophy, look at that, I basically won. Yes, thank you, sir. Yeah, for missing the rabbit. <laughs> you only get these for being really, really crap. After the first five stands, which were a mess, I slowed the gun down, slowed myself down, and started to rebuild the scorecard. Although it was too little too late. Yep. It's me, it's me, it's me. Out of the box, Dan was shooting really, really well. However, about halfway, he stumbled a little bit. Or else he would have been on for an amazing score. Big slow gun, big ice. Yeah. There was a couple of stands that required a slightly faster gun, and they made me happy. A target with some face, Jim. A target with some face. Actually, the ability to pull off the front edge of something was quite rare on one of these courses. So when I got to those stands, I actually hit something. For sure, next time, I will shoot more practice and will set my gun up to be a little bit more American. Now we found the water station. Come on, Sash. Yes, please. There you go, baby. The rhythm of American clays is different. Hold on. My uh, list of excuses. Nope. No, I've run out. Yeah, the first or the second bird. <laughs> the final stand was a little bit like the first. You had a target shooting out away from the right and a rolling income. By this point, I was awake and I shot it how I should have shot the first stand, actually hitting some of the clays. Hill, you shot that better than most. Reasonably well. Jim shot that actually very consistently. Okay, but, I, but I'm pretty sure I got I beat by a fifth grader with the Beretta A400. Oh man, that kid could shoot. Yes. That's the worst score I've ever put in. <laughs> but it was fun. Sorry. You'll never see him again and I'm burning him. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'll give you no, five you bucks to burn it. I'll give you 10 bucks to burn it. I'll give you 100 bucks to burn it. All right. <laughs> we didn't get time to visit every vendor, but I did manage to sneak into Clay Shooter Supply where I met up with Ian, one of the guys that works there, who talked me through some of the business and talked me through some pistols, because we don't get to see those at home. I've got some course revolvers, I've got some Nighthawks and some other fun stuff. So Korth uh, is like the big dog posh boy pistol. It is, yes. These guys are probably the finest new pistol you can buy. So we've got a couple of options. Classic is what they call this guy. This one's in 44 Magnum. I mean, what a beautiful thing. Yep, yep, can't get much better than that. Just the way the cylinder opens and closes the machining, isn't it? Just a beautiful... It is, and that, fa that finish is something that's hard to achieve as well. So they've uh, mirror polished the gun before they've done a diamond-like carbon coating and then polished oh, wow. that. So most of the time that finish is going to be a matte, uh, where this, it's obviously very... It's just very, a lot of extra work. Right? Absolutely. And what does those... What, what, how, does, how much is it? This guy is going to be in that uh, $9,000 to $10,000 range. No, $10,000. But again, for the finest revolver you can buy off the shelf. And there's woolly mammoth grips. Yes, sir. Yep. So that not, is awesome. Yes, sir. It sure is. So Nighthawk does a few grips like this a quarter. Uh, what they've done is they've taken tusk and tooth from Woolly Mammoth and made them into grips. So you can put these on any Nighthawk pistol that you might own or any other 1911 that... Uh, How much are they? Uh, those are roughly about $1,000 for the set. Awesome, man. I mean, but you are mostly being clay shooter supply, long sh shotguns. Yep. Oh. Yep. You guys are going to become longhorn stockists. Yep, that's brand new for us. So what, we're, I think, two to three months out. Uh, we're going to have some longhorns in the shop in Dallas. 
I think we'll have a fitting gun so people mm -hmm. can come out and get fit, order the gun accordingly from there. Ah, it's really exciting. Super excited. Yeah, it's a, it's a big it's a big thing for us, and, and we're very proud to become part of the Lot yeah, Lanta family. Best of luck to you. I mean, I obviously think they're great. I have a sneaking suspicion that'll probably become my favorite gun. One of my favorite things to see was the new Laporte trap that had adjustable everything and could throw any target you could imagine. Ah! I was like, it's a no bird. Laporte, who's one of the trap sponsors here, has just released a new trap called the Gravity. And I'm going to any new cool tech. All right, they've got the robots over there, the clay robots. This is really cool. So the trap is on an arm that can tilt, then the trap can tilt, and then the trap can go up and down, and then the arm can go up and down, and then you've got a button to decrease or increase spring. So you can go from a huge Shondell with a few holding downs of the button, you can go to something that literally just falls out of the hole. That is awesome. We played with this a lot. Yeah, yeah. So for all the movements, we use an actuator with a normal 12 volt battery. We only use like a 20 watt uh, solar panel. But these are Laporte clays, right? Exactly. So you can put a bit more power the one on from them. the US. American spec, but, but a little harder. Exactly. Good brakes too, proper brakes. Yeah. Feels like I'm being at home, that's why I shot them well. The Nationals is attended by a lot of people. One of those people was Will Fennell, owner of Fennell Shooting School. He is a lovely guy, we met him last time at the US Open, and instantly it felt like we had been friends for years. Mr. Fennell. Sir, yes sir. How's it been? Excellent, it's been a great event. Uh, I've been coming to this event nonstop since 96, I think. Oh, wow. And it's really been cool to watch it grow. Uh, it is just tremendous now, we're filling up about every acre of this property, and it's a big piece of property. It is properly shooting. I mean, day. there is just gunfire going all day, non-stop, so many events. Well, they're saying two million targets. Two million event. targets this week. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And to be fair, the way I shot, they could pick up a million of them. <laughs> yeah, how was the fit task? I didn't get the to The task was it. very good. Uh, I believe Neil Chadwick said it, I think. Um, really good targets. It gives them a chance of uh, kind of stretching things out a little bit. You know, the main event, they've got a lot of people in various different classes here. They don't want to kill, kill everybody. So the fish has say, they get a chance to range out a little bit. Some big, good birds. It's yeah. fine. I've been struggling with those those, those closer ones. They're uh -huh. not, they're, they're, uh -huh. they've broken me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't just shoot long driven birds here, you know. That's we, all I want. to shoot little quail and stuff, you know. Yeah. Something zipping in and out of the bushes. Yeah, I clearly have got yeah. no skill for that whatsoever. <laughs> well, it's a challenge. You got to be well rounded. Well, the There's everything from the odd 65 yarder to the 10 yarder. A little technical pair mm -hmm. that you don't quite have enough. You got to manage the gun well, pay attention. Can't be a one trick pony. You can't just be a big lead guy on all the things, or yeah, you can't be just shoot right I'm at it, guy. Down. <laughs> I think the answer we must will come to Fennel Shooting School and learn to shoot American targets. Absolutely, bring it over. I'll have a good time. Have a good time. Take care, buddy. Shot so well. Yeah. At the end of the week, in the evenings, it was time for the shoot-offs under the lights. This was crazy. Huge crowds, a commentator, cameras everywhere, and the crowd whooping and hollering. Really excited to see these guys shoot. It was a great atmosphere. This is a totally different thing and is miles ahead of what we see back home. Everybody for one team's gonna shoot first. And I loved it. The extra pressure of the big crowd cheering on the bleachers brings is not to be underestimated. This was one of the highlights of the event for me and, I believe, for most of the people watching. 
It really shows a love and passion for the shooters and the sport that people will stay behind, really buy in to who wins these competitions. So once again, I left the USA with my mind blown. This event is on such a scale that it's hard to comprehend. The quantity of shooters, the quantity of families supporting the shooters, the quantity and quality of the businesses that attend, and the genuine happiness that every attendee had made this event truly special. I hope we have managed to bring you a flavor of what it was like, and I cannot wait to go back next year.